Hey guys, welcome back to another relaxed, laid back, get ready with me. So today is Valentine's Day when you're watching this. Well, if you're watching this when I'm uploading it, today it would be Valentine's Day. Hello, happy Valentine's Day. And so for today's video, I just wanted to sit down and get ready with you guys. I'm about to do my makeup because I'm about to go out. I'm not going out for anything fancy. I'm actually going to like a work thing, but let's pretend I'm going to like a romantic Valentine's Day dinner. I'm gonna be doing my makeup Valentine's Day inspired of course. I want to do a nice bright bold lip and get a little smoky up in here, a little glamorous. And I gotta be honest, I gotta be honest. I'm not going out on Valentine's Day this year. It lands on a Friday and the thought of me going out Friday night on one of the busiest nights of the year because I feel like everybody goes out to dinner. Like the thought of that makes me want to cry. But for this video, we can pretend. I actually mainly just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys. I just wanted to like rant and ramble a little bit. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different. It's not gonna be like a tutorial style video. It's going to be a true get ready with me. Just throw this video on if you're getting ready tonight for Valentine's Day. Let's get ready together. Let's just talk about life. I'm not gonna be really discussing what I'm doing in depth. If I don't say what I'm using, I'll write what I'm using here on the screen like in case I go off on a tangent or something. But I just want you to keep that in mind. Today is not like a tutorial. We're just hanging out and doing our makeup. Also, excuse my hair, <laughs> excuse my robe. I'm obviously not put together at the moment. I'm planning on washing my hair tonight. It's a hot mess. And you would think I would have fixed it before I sat down to film this, but we're all friends here. It's a judgment-free zone. So I am gonna start off with the eyes. I wanna do like something very sultry and a little smoky, but it's nothing you've never seen before. Like I said, this is not a tutorial. But I do wanna use the brand new Jaclyn Hill Volume 2 palette. I just got this in the mail yesterday. And I wanna use a couple shades from this palette. I actually just dropped this from very high up, flat on its face like this. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna open that and it's gonna be destroyed. But actually it uh, turned out fine. The only color that got a little bit damaged was this black one and it fell from pretty high up. I was pretty surprised. So I'm gonna use a couple of these shades. I know there's like some huge controversy behind this palette and people are either really excited or really upset. I think the palette is really, really pretty. I think the color story is very nice. I mean, if people are upset, in my opinion, they're upset for other reasons. I feel like it definitely goes much deeper than just this palette, but looking at it, it is a really pretty color story. I know a lot of people were like, uh, there's like 10 of those shades that look exactly the same, but when you swatch them next to each other, they are a bit different. The only ones that I would say are very similar are Love Handles and Perfectionist. Like we didn't need both of these in one palette. I mean, they're different, but they're similar enough where we only needed one, but the rest of these, they do swatch very differently than the other shades, and I can see why she put them in the palette. I think it's a really nice color story. It's definitely bold and bright and not for the faint of heart, but there are natural shades in here as well. And honestly, I like Morphe eyeshadows. I really, really do. I know that a lot of the palettes are hit and miss. I will admit that. Some palettes I absolutely love and others not so much, but I still really enjoy Morphe eyeshadows. I think for the price, they're just so, so good. And to be honest, I really enjoyed the first Jaclyn Hill palette. I thought it was really good, very pigmented. It blended out really nicely, really rich, buttery. I liked it a lot. And honestly, I do like the original one more than this one, just because of the color story. Like I would definitely use that one a lot more than this one. This one is very like orangey pink, which I actually do like. I love orange shadows, but the other one is a little bit more wearable. But this one is fun. So I guess it depends on how you feel. And honestly, at the end of the day, you like what you like, you do what you do. I'm gonna take perfectionist. You don't have to buy the palette. You support whoever you want to support. That's the beautiful thing about life is that we're all not meant to like the same things and we all have different tastes and opinions. And yeah. <laughs> Speaking of opinions, I'm about to sound so judgmental and hypocritical right now, but ugh, I just have to, I have to talk about this. I have to. I know I recently posted a video on my channel called everyone is fake and I was talking about people on social media and the pressures that it puts on us as a society to just like be perfect and beautiful all the time. And I got such an overwhelming response to that video. So many of you guys just really connected with me on that. I was reading so many stories in the comments and it truly blows my mind. Like after I was reading all those comments in that video, it's crazy how much social media really does affect 
our lives every single day. And I bring this up because the other day I was talking about this with my sister. We discuss social media a lot, her and I, but I was just expressing my frustrations to her. And I don't want to offend anyone. Like people post whatever the hell they want to post. And like, who are you to tell me what I can and cannot show on Instagram or what I can and cannot do with my platform? Do not get me wrong. Like I'm not trying to say people shouldn't be themselves and do what they want, but it drives me crazy when I go on to someone's Instagram and every picture is all about La Pinta. You know, like La Pinta. I don't know how to say that in English. Like, it's all about the the look, the, the, the La Pinta, you know? You know what I mean? Like, when you go on someone's Instagram and every single picture is with them with Louis Vuitton, Chanel, me posing on top of my Mercedes Jeep. Here are my 10,000 bracelets stacked up by Cartier. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to sound like a hater. Because if you work hard for your money, you do whatever you want to do with your money. I am nobody to tell you what to post on Instagram, like I said. But it just drives me crazy when it's almost like people are working just to buy these Louis Vuitton things. Like it truly feels like for certain influencers, that's all they're about. That's the only important thing in life is posting up all these pictures with all of these brands and all of this luxury living. It freaking drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. And I know that it shouldn't, but it really does. Like the other day I was on somebody's Instagram. I actually don't know who the girl is. She's like an Instagram model and I wouldn't want to put her out there anyway, even if I didn't know what her name was. But a friend of mine like linked me to her Instagram. And I show you not every single picture that I scrolled through, there had to be a designer bag. There just had to be something in the photo that said, hey, I make a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of G money on the outer corners. And like I said, don't get me wrong, I have designer bags. I have super expensive things in my closet that I have purchased for myself. You know, I have spent a lot of money on things that weren't necessary on designer things, but I really, really, really try to make it a point to not shove it down everybody's throat on social media. And you know, some people might look at that and think, oh, well then you're being a hypocrite. You're not being true to who you are, but I don't walk around with my designer bags and I don't walk around flexing and flaunting like all these people do on Instagram. And I guarantee you that these people don't walk around on, on, the, on a day to day like that either. It's just for the gram. It's just pa la pinta. It's all about la pinta. And ugh, I know I sound like a little right now but the reason it bothers me so much is because there's so many people who feel like they're not enough because they don't have those items like imagine following an influencer right and this person is your idol and you look up to them and you love them so much and every day they're posting their Chanel their Louis Vuitton their Gucci their Tom Ford all those brands, they're constantly shoving them down your face and they're constantly posing with them every single day. How would that make you feel? Because in my opinion, it sends the wrong message. I may be overreacting and you may be thinking, Kathleen, it's not that serious. It's not that deep. Social media, Instagram is not that deep. It's not to you and me, but to so many people online, to so many young girls, it is. It is a big deal and so many girls try to do the absolute most just for the likes and just to try to get ahead on Instagram and it's so sad that they feel like the only way to be popping and popular is to have the Chanel and to have all of that. And it makes me really sad. It does. It makes me really sad. It's just, I don't want to spend my time following someone who I can't really relate to. You know, that's what I love about YouTube. And that's what I've always loved about influencers and YouTubers. You kind of have that feeling that they're your friend. You know what I mean? And so I feel like once you start to lose that connection with your followers and you feel like you're on a totally different level than your followers now, you now lose that connection. You no longer have that that connection with your subscribers or your followers. And it makes me sad. It does, it makes me really sad. I wish that more influencers were just a little bit more personal, you know? And I know I spoke about this in that video, so I don't wanna go off on a tangent and talk about the same thing all over again. But I just hope moving forward, like in the future, people become a little bit more open online. I just want Instagram and all of social media to just become a more positive, relatable place. And I know that may not be the case because I mean, there's a reason why uh, people like this are so popular. People like to see designer stuff, but I just hope in the future it moves in a more positive direction. Do you know how expensive a Chanel purse is? Do you have any idea? They are a lot of money. A lot of money. All these designer brands, they're just flaunted all over the internet, all over Instagram, like if like if it's nothing. Like if these brands are accessible and relatable and anybody can get them. Do you get me? Like, do you not see that? How normal it is to rock all these super expensive brands in like the influencer world. But like for us, for the rest of us. Me mortals. That is just so not realistic. I'm not saying that people can't afford Chanel. I am not saying that. Of course, there are hardworking people out there who make more money than influencers who have other jobs. Do you know what I, you know what I mean? I just mean for the average person, it's not super attainable. That's all I'm saying. 
That's all I'm trying to say. It's almost like when you pose with your super expensive G-Wagon that your photo is gonna get a lot more likes than if you pose in front of your Toyota Corolla. So then people turn around and they're like, shit, am I not worthy enough? Am I not cool enough because I don't have a Mercedes, a G Mercedes Jeep? You know how expensive those Mercedes Jeeps are? And then people online make it seem like it's just another walk in the park. It just blows my mind. Guys, I'm gonna go in with my So Jaded palette because I wanna use stoned, I wanna use a deep, dark, cool tone brown. And look guys, I know I'm being really hard on these influencers and honestly they're just trying their best and they're not trying to hurt anybody you know they're just taking pictures and buying their stuff and you know I'm not trying to fault them because at the end of the day they pretty much just fell into the pressures of social media as well I know that some of these girls feel like they have to be this way and have to look a certain way to be accepted or to be liked and that's so freaking sad and I know social media had a huge role in that look at Kylie Jenner for example I know we spoke about her in my last video but imagine being Kylie Jenner and growing up with Kim Kardashian as your sister right they're both really Really beautiful but during the time where Kylie was growing up Kim Kardashian was Kim Kardashian she was like the hottest thing ever people were constantly because I would see comments all the time back in the day people were constantly making Kylie feel like the ugly sister and Dude, that, that shit got to her. It's a similar situation now with the rest of the world. Now everybody wants to look like Kylie Jenner. Obviously not everybody, I'm just generalizing but on social media everybody wants to look like Kylie Jenner and if you don't you are so insecure about yourselves it's like the rest of us are now Kylie Jenner back in 2013 like how she felt growing up in her teens that's how the internet feels because of the pressures of social media I'm gonna take my diamond eyeshadow from my so jaded palette and I'm just gonna pack this on the lid and I know that's covering the eyeliner I just did with the with that eyeshadow but I'm gonna go over it with a black in a second to make it a little bit more intense by the way I'm sorry that I just went on that tangent and that rant for a second time here on my channel I'm sorry I swear I'm not trying to be judgy I'm just trying to explain how I feel inside and I just don't want people to feel the pressures of social media man it's tough it's hard I hate when I start to feel so insecure about myself like sometimes I'm putting on clothes and I'm like oh my god I have no hips like I have no hips I sometimes feel like I'm a straight pencil all the way down and you know sometimes I'm like damn how come everybody has these nice juicy hips and I'm over here looking like a damn pencil and so I have to stop myself from having those thoughts because first of all it's not cool to me it's not nice Kathleen your hips are fine and second of all there are other more important things for me to be worried about like making sure you guys don't care about your pencil hips okay i'm here to tell you pencil hips are okay in fact it's all okay it's just social media has led us to believe that there is one type of beautiful and that's the beautiful everybody seems to try to achieve and that's okay for them you know whatever makes people feel more confident and more comfortable i just want to go to sleep every night knowing that i try my best to be the best person I can be for my followers. I know I have a large platform and I know that what I say matters and makes a difference and I just never want to send out the wrong message. I never want you guys to feel insecure. I just, I want you guys to always feel good looking at my content, watching my content and that is my number one priority, you know? I'm going to take the black in the palette now and I'm going to create a wing liner with my eyeshadow and I feel like I've been talking for 70 hours so let me breeze through this really quick I'm trying to make my eyeliner look a bit more straight do you see like when I look forward that the line doesn't really curve with my shape I want it to look like totally straight right here so that's what I'm attempting to do Okay, I want to add a more pinky color to my crease, so I'm going to take Rose Quartz.
Okay, I don't know why I did that to my inner corners as I started to apply the shade. I'm in it. I was like, oh, that has like a pink undertone. I didn't realize that. So then I went over it with pearl and now we have a pearly pink situation, but that's okay. I am now going to go in with some falsies. I'm going to apply my Milani Dangerous Lengths Mascara and my Kiss Ritzy Lashes. I just realized I'm not wearing any earrings. I'm gonna put earrings on. Porque si mi mamá me ve sin arete, ay Dios, me va a mandar un mensaje. Mama, you do arete? Look, mom. I'm wearing my earrings. Okay, so I do plan on leaving my lower lash line kind of bare. I would usually go super smoky and very heavy on my lower lash line, especially with lashes and all of that. But since I'm going in with a bold lip, I don't want my lower lash line to be too intense and then it just clashes with my lip color. So we're gonna keep the drama on the top. But before I finish up the eyes, I am gonna go ahead and jump into the face. I'm gonna prime my skin using the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer. This is the hydrating one. This is a really, really nice primer. I've only used it a couple times, so I don't know if I love it yet, but I do really, really like it. It's very, very hydrating. It goes on like watery, but it's just so moisturizing. It reminds me a lot of my Holy Grail Primer from Smashbox, the primerizer. This has a very similar consistency. You can see how moisturized and hydrated my skin looks now. Yummy, it's like I drank some water. And now I'm gonna go in with a tried and true mama's favorite foundation, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD. Have I ever mentioned that? I would say out of all the foundations in my collection, this one is my favorite, 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 favorite foundation. And it's crazy because my favorite foundation used to be the Makeup Forever Face and Body, but they don't make it anymore. So my second favorite became my first favorite. I love this foundation because it just looks so good in pictures. It looks so good in person and it lasts forever. Okay guys, so another tangent, another rant, another story for you. Have you guys been keeping up with what has been happening with Diva Curl? If you don't have curly hair, you're probably like, what's happening? If you don't know, Diva Girl is a hair brand that specifically targets girls with curly hair and it has been so loved by so many people here on YouTube. I mean, for years and years and years, I've been seeing people getting the Diva Cut, people doing the curly girl method and using Diva Curl. And I've actually purchased multiple things from that brand. And I also used to use their curl cream. I was giving that a shot for a while, but I went back to my Brio Geo stuff and I'm so glad I did because, oh my God. I'm going to link Aisha's video down below. I actually had no idea who Aisha was until I saw her video pop up like on my homepage or on my recommended page. And it was a video titled like, oh, Diva Curl ruined my hair or something like that. And I started watching her video and she was talking about how Diva Curl just completely damaged her hair. Her hair is like falling out and turns out there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases of people losing hair from Diva Curl, specifically the no poo line. I think it's happening with a lot of other products as well, but it's especially happening with the no poo line. And I got so freaked out from that video that I literally threw away all my Diva Curl stuff. I had like three products, but I got rid of them because I, that freaked me out. And so I would highly recommend you watching that video, especially if you use Diva Curl. And you know what? I'm actually glad that I stumbled upon that video. Of course, I am not glad that that is happening to her or happening to anyone. That is literally awful. That's terrible. I feel so bad for her. But because of that video coming up on my feed, it inspired me to do a major deep dive on all things Curly Girl and all things Diva Curl and all of that. And I have been researching that on YouTube for literally a week straight. And honestly, I have become obsessed with trying to revive my curls back and I'm gonna do my best to follow the curly girl method. I'll do a whole video on this. I wanna try it out for three months and then I wanna give you guys my feedback to see if it really helps, if it really works. Now, with that being said, I mentioned this in my BoxyCharm unboxing. I'm not gonna go full on curly girl method. It's just a lot of work. It's a lot. <gasps> A lot of work, a lot of rules, but I am gonna adapt some tricks and some techniques that I've learned from a bunch of curly girls online. And I'm really, 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 really gonna try my best to revive my curls because I had curly hair once upon a time. I've just been ironing it since literally the sixth grade. And so my hair hasn't gotten curly in 10 years. <laughs> my hair is just nothing but 
frizzy waves. So wish me luck, guys. I'm gonna document the whole thing. And hopefully if I can make it to three months, I can keep pushing. I'm just interested to see if my curl pattern does come back. And I know it takes time and it takes commitment, but I'm excited. I bought so many Curly Girl products and the best thing is that Brio Gio is Curly Girl approved. Like there are no silicones, no sulfates, no parabens, none of that in their products, which is amazing. So it doesn't disrupt your curl pattern. It doesn't weigh down your hair. So I'm still using my Brio Gio products. I've just replaced my mousses and my hair oils and serums. All of my mousses and hair oils had a bunch of silicone in it. So my friends, please wish me luck on the journey I'm about to embark on. I'm gonna take a little bit of that stone shade and I'm gonna rub it really, 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 really close to my lower lash line. And I'm just focusing this on the outer corner right here. Just a little, little smudge action right here. And that's it. Little smudge. And that's it. Normally right now I would go in with an eyeliner and run it across my waterline, but I like that my waterline is empty because it makes my eyes appear a little bit larger. I'm just gonna go in with some mascara on my top and bottom lashes. Adding mascara while you have falsies on helps fuse your natural lashes with your fake ones. But always remember not to apply too much and focus the mascara at the base of your lashes. Not so much up here because you will get clumping. You wanna focus it towards the base. By the way, I didn't set my concealer underneath my eyes just so that my skin looks a little bit more dewy and fresh. I would normally set this concealer. This is my ColourPop Hyaluronic Acid Pretty Fresh Concealer. It does sink into my lines a lot more than my Dose of Colors one, but it just looks like so pretty and fresh. I didn't want to set it, but I do have to set right here on the creases of my eyes. I'm just gonna add a little bit of powder there just so that the concealer doesn't like sink into there. Okay, so to add an overall ethereal glow to my skin, I'm gonna take this YSL Touche Clot 3D All Over Glow Compact Powder in the shade Universal. And now I feel really bad showing a YSL product after my rent in the beginning of this video, but it's all about balance, okay? I also use the Milani mascara. I like a good balance. There's nothing wrong with designer, okay? There is nothing wrong with loving designer products. I just hope I'm not shoving them down your throat. That's all. That's all I'm that's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. My god, I sound like such a freaking idiot in this video. Like <laughs> Can you be any more hypocritical? I'm gonna take my Juvia's Place tapered brush and I'm gonna take this powder and lightly dust it on my whole face, kind of. This is a very beautiful ethereal light powder, but an alternative would be the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. If you have that in your collection, you can totally use that. I think they're pretty much like dupes for one another, honestly. I'm just take a little bit, just rub that on my face and this is gonna kind of set my skin while giving it a glow. So your makeup will last all day. It's not gonna slip anywhere, but it's not gonna look flat or anything like that. Okay, so now let's throw on some bronzer. I'm gonna take my L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronzer. Bronze it. Lumi Bronze It in the shade 01. These drugstore brands need to stop being so creative with their names. I'm just going to lightly contour and bronze simultaneously which is why i love this bronzer so much because it has a really nice color to where you can contour really beautifully like it has the perfect undertone but it has a bit of a sheen to it so you also look nice and glowy and it's not like chalky gray you know and matte I like it. Now I'm gonna take this Real Techniques Light Layer Powder Brush. Guys, I am obsessed with this. I just recently bought this, but I have been loving it to like diffuse products on my face, to apply bronzer to my face. Look at the shape, it's perfect for bronzer. If you have a bronzer in your collection that's a little bit too pigmented and you wanna apply a really light, soft layer of it, this brush is freaking perfect for that. I'm obsessed with it. Okay. Blush. I'm gonna be mixing two blushes together. I'm gonna take a little bit of my beloved Vintage Rose blush that I've been loving from Physicians Formula. It's a really pretty warm pink. But then on top of that, I'm gonna take a little bit of Warm Soul from MAC and I'm gonna make a nice juicy combination. Oh my gosh, I keep leaving my blush brush at Bertha. You know what, I'm gonna use this brush. Oh, this might be too large <laughs> for blush, but we're going with it anyway. warm soul. I'm gonna drag it over my nose as well to give it a nice flushed look. For highlight, I'm gonna take a tried and true. This is my J-Cat Triple Crown Big Shadow in Dulce de Leche. And I'm gonna take the pinkier shade and pop that on my cheekbones. This 
highlight is so freaking intense, you have to be really careful with it. And now, we're gonna set our face with the best freaking mist to ever exist. I'm not talking about the formula. I'm just talking about the mist. Look at this bad boy. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen this in action and in slow motion. But look at this. <gasps> wow. 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 <laughs> what a fine ass mist. Mm, you fine. It smells really good too. I hope the formula is good. I haven't noticed it breaking up or anything, but it feels really nice. It feels like I'm not putting anything on my face. <laughs> That's how fine the mist is. It's so nice. So I'm just gonna let that sink in for a second before we pop on the lip. We are almost done with this video. I feel like I've been sitting here for five hours. I definitely talk too much. All of my elementary school teachers can agree. Speaking of which, I wonder how my elementary school teachers are doing. You know, I think about them sometimes and you know, I hope they're doing well. Okay, let's freaking finish this video. <laughs> that setting mist leaves your face so freaking dewy. I mean, I know I applied a lot, maybe too much, but it's so nice. So like I said earlier, I want a very bold lip today. I'm gonna start by lining my lips, of course. I'm gonna take my Essence Stay Lip Liner. This is an eight hour waterproof lip liner and this is in the shade You and Me Ship. So I'm just gonna line my lips. So I'm gonna be mixing two liquid lipsticks together to create the perfect shade. These are both from Ofra Cosmetics. This is Atlantic City and this one's Santa Monica. And I really wanna go for a red, but I want it to be a little bit pinky. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this. By the way, speaking of red, look at this Delit Chase red nail polish I'm wearing. You can get it now at lightslacquer.com. It is made in the USA, it is cruelty free, and it is under $10. And it is waiting for you. Okay guys, so that completes this look. This was my 2020 Valentine's Day inspired makeup. If you guys don't end up recreating this look, I hope you enjoyed this video at least. And I hope you have an amazing Valentine's Day, whether you share it with a significant other or with your friends. I hope today is full of love, especially self-love. Most importantly, self-love. And yeah, just happy Valentine's Day, guys. But yeah, that completes this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so, so, so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! <sighs> my braid is very sad right now. Oh boy. You know what's weird? I cannot remember my second grade teacher. My first grade teacher was Miss Vizcaino. My second grade teacher, drawing a blank. Third grade, Miss Johnson. Fourth grade, Miss Aleman. And fifth grade, Miss McDonald. What happened to me in second grade and why am I suppressing those memories? Hmm?